Hey there, fifth grade mathematicians. It's Mr. Tang here. Glad to be back with you on PCPS TV. We're going to continue our focus on algebraic thinking. And today's lesson takes a look specifically at numerical patterns. This lesson is the first lesson for the week of June 1st to June 5th. Can you believe it's already June? Way to go, boys and girls. Keep working so hard. We're all so very proud of you. Your learning journey is just getting started and we're excited to be right here by your side. Our objective for today is that we will use properties of operations in order to analyze numerical patterns and solve real world problems. Let's start off by looking at this table. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Can you think of a situation where we, you can use this kind of information? Can you make up your own problem? Take a second to think about that. So we see a table of sorts. We have weeks, we have an Emma, and we have a Jorge. Looks like there's a start. Looks like there's money involved. So with all things, a little context can go a long way. It can never hurt to have more information. We just have to be able to figure out what information we deem important. So let's take a look. Emma has $100 in her savings account. Jorge has $50 in his savings account. They each put $10 in their accounts at the end of each week. Complete the tables to see how much each of them has saved after five weeks. What patterns do you notice? All right, but before we get into how to solve this, let's turn to our friends at Pearson for more on numerical patterns we can use when solving real world problems. How can you solve problems involving numerical patterns? Think about this question during the lesson. Lindsay has a sage plant that is three and five tenths inches tall. She also has a rosemary plant that is five and two tenths inches tall. Both plants grow one and five tenths inches taller each week. How tall will the plants be after five weeks? What is the relationship between the heights of the plants? You can model with math by creating tables to help identify relationships between corresponding terms in the number sequences. How can tables help you solve? Tables make it easier to compare the heights of the plants after each week and to see relationships. How can you find the height of Lindsay's sage plant after one week? Add 3 and 5 tenths plus 1 and 5 tenths equals 5. What is the height of Lindsay's sage plant after two weeks? Select your answer. Add 5 plus 1 and 5 tenths equals 6 and 5 tenths. You can use the rule add 1 and 5 tenths to complete the table for the sage plant. You can use the rule add 1 and 5 tenths to complete the table for the rosemary plant. How much taller is the rosemary plant than the sage plant to start? How do you know? The rosemary plant is 1 and 7 tenths inches taller than the sage plant to start because 5 and 2 tenths minus 3 and 5 tenths equals 1 and 7 tenths. The rosemary plant is always 1 and 7 tenths inches taller than the sage plant. Now you know how you can solve problems involving numerical patterns. We can use and analyze numerical patterns in a table in order to solve real world mathematical problems. All right. Let's bring Emma and Jorge back. So what do we know? 
I'm going to reread the problem because I find that's always helpful. Emma has $100 in her savings account. Jorge has $50 in his savings account. They each put $10 in their accounts at the end of each week. Complete the tables to see how much of each, how much each of them has saved after five weeks. What patterns do you notice? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use a highlighting tool here and maybe highlight some key information. We know that Emma has $100 in her savings account. Jorge has $50 in his savings account. They each put, I'm going to use a different, let's say underline some other key information here. They each put $10 in their accounts at the end of each week. Okay, and now here's what the ask is. Complete the tables to see how much each of them has saved after five weeks. Well, from the video, we learn that there's got to be some sort of a relationship here. From that relationship, we can develop a pattern or a rule. Can you figure out what rule we're going to apply to Emma and Jorge? Yeah, you're right. Add $10 at the end of each week. So we know that Emma has $100, Jorge has $50. What else do you notice? Okay, Emma's $100 is $50 more than Jorge. Both of them add $10 to their account at the end of each week. Will Jorge ever have more money than Emma? Not if they're getting this, not if they're saving the same amount every week. Because Emma started with more, she's always going to have more if the pattern stays the same. So let's go ahead and complete this chart. We know our rule is going to be plus 10. Plus 10. So at the start of each week, we know that we can add 10 more. So 100 plus 10 is going to be 110. Another 10 is going to be 120, 130, 140. And at the end of week five, Emma is going to have $150 saved. Let's move over to Jorge. Same rule applies here. At the end of each week, we're going to add $10. So then we have 60, 10 more is 70, 10 more is 80. 10 more is 90, and at the end of week five, 10 more is 100. So at the end of five weeks, Emma has $150 saved, and Jorge has $100. All right, boys and girls, now it's your turn. In the Try It section of your Schoology page, you can find the Reteach page 15-1. There you can open the attached document, use the draw feature in PowerPoint to show your work and record your answer for each problem. After completing the Reteach 15-1 page, log in to Pearson to complete your Quick Check 15-1 assigned to you by your teacher. Or if you don't have access, complete the independent practice section of the practice page 15-1. Then, when you're feeling confident and ready to move on, you can head over to the Show What You Know section of your Schoology page to complete the formative assessment portion of the lesson. Here, you'll be prompted to begin your independent practice assignment assigned to you by your teacher. There, you will have the opportunity to solve problems much like you've practiced today. Take your time and be sure to read all the directions carefully. Use scrap paper when necessary. When you finish that, check out the additional resource page for more practice and review. There, you'll find a more practice and problem solving page, a math and science connection, and an enrichment page. As a reminder, if you have access, you should be completing six to eight Dreambox lessons a week. 
You must first log into BCPS1 using your own username and password, then access Dreambox through your instructional and productivity tools icon. Well, that's all for us today. You guys did a wonderful job. And until next time, be sure to stay safe, wash those hands, and do the math.